This is a microscope that's a digital microscope, which basically means they have a screen and camera integrated into an eyepiece for it. I was sent this to review for free. If you wanted to purchase it, the MSRP on it is about $200. They haven't paid me for my review, and my opinions remain my own. So the microscope comes with this um, nice little storage pouch here. It has a handle here you can carry it around. It's square, so it'll stack pretty well. When you open it up, there's nice foam here. Um, comes with a user's manual. And this is all English. It seems to be pretty well written, nice pictures. Um, tells you basically how to use the microscope and the 7 inch screen. So it comes with a HDMI cable. So this looks to be a micro HDMI to HDMI cable here um, for taking the output of the display and putting it up on a larger monitor or television. There's also a USB A to C cable which might be for charging or power. There's the power adapter here, which is probably to plug into this USB-A cable here um, to power the microscope and its lights. We have a box here of biological specimens, five plus five pieces. So these are example slides with things already on them. There's also this clear um, gauge for calibrating the you know, size gauge on your system here at different magnification levels. So they have these numbered, this says large intestinal. This says ant WM. Ovary of a fish. So they have various biological specimens pre-built on these slides. It looks like they have five specimens pre-done and they give you five glass slides that don't have anything on them for you to put your own specimens on. And then we have the main microscope itself. So there's this screen here and the microscope body. And so you can see here that the screen folds up, but the camera is actually down in there as part of the microscope. So this is not a microscope where you can put your own eyepiece on. It is only going to work through the camera and through this screen. So on the back is a USB-C power port. On the side here, there's a micro SD or trans flash card slot for recording and HDTV output. So that's that micro HDMI connector for exporting video to an HDMI monitor. Um, we have a stage here that goes up and down. It doesn't have XY, it's just a Z adjustment with up and down. And then we have three objective lenses here. So you have a 401, a 40065, and a 10. 025. And according to the specifications, this can do up to a 1200x magnification. We have some controls down here. It looks like light level, something else. Um, camera, take a picture, take a video, probably playback, and I don't know what that is. So I'll have to explore the uh, user interface. But there is a bottom light, and there is a light up here for up, you know, illuminating from the top. So as microscopes go, this guy is compact. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of desk space. The screen is relatively large, but it folds back for goods for storage. Um, it looks pretty nice. It's a plastic body. You know, it's, it's a, a lot of plastic in the construction, but it looks pretty solid. You know, this stage moves up and down very nicely. Um, and, you know, with the three different zoom levels here, I think it's going to work pretty well. So let's give it a try.
Now under the bottom in a standard kind of snap off battery door there is a user replaceable 18650 cell so it will work autonomously without a power cord um, at least until the battery is, is run down and you plug it in to recharge it. And if that battery ever degrades over time you can just pop it out and pop a new one in. Here's the nameplate. It's the Tom Live Biological Microscope. Its model is DM301 Pro. It has a 7 inch IPS display and it says its power is 2 amps and the input is 5 volts DC at 2 amps. So it turns on and you just push this power button on the back. Alright, so I've pushed, I've pushed and held the power button. Despite there being a rechargeable battery inside, it's not turning on, so it looks to me like the battery um, may be discharged. And it might be that the power switch got pushed on in shipping, but I'm going to plug it in. According to the manual, a green light means it's working, a red light means it's charging the battery, and if it's off, it means it's fully charged or just turned off. All right, I've plugged this into a USB-C power delivery cable. It does negotiate USB-C power delivery. The red light came on for charging. Now, it's drawing 5 volts, but it's doing a very low amount of current. Um, you know, it's doing like half a watt here. And so I don't know if it's doing that because it's fully charged or if it's because the battery is so low that the BMS is ramping up the charging current very slowly. So I'm going to leave it plugged in until this red light turns off to make sure it's fully charged. And I'll check on it to see if the power goes a little higher later on. So in case we are charging this up from a completely dead battery, I've reset my uh, amp hour and watt hour counters here and we'll see how much power it takes to charge that battery up. All right, it does look like the battery had gotten discharged in shipping. Um, right now, it's drawing 5 volts at 1 amp, um, and it's basically charging the battery at 5 watts. Now, it says it's a 2 amp device, so it may be that it takes 1 amp to run and 1 amp to charge the battery. I'm going to push the button, and there I turned it on. It's green now. Um, and it's only drawing a little less than an amp now. Well, now it's, it's jumped up to about an amp draw when it's turned on as well. Um, I kind of suspect it's not charging the battery while it's running and is only running. And I'm going to turn off this guy. There we go. So I turned it off and it's still drawing basically one amp. So I suspect it doesn't actually charge the battery while it's turned on. I think it only charges the battery when it's turned off. All right, the red light turned off, um, and it took 10 watt hours to fully charge this guy, so I'm going to say that the battery was completely discharged in the box. All right, let's put this guy through its paces. There is a piece of green tape on the corner here, which I believe is to pull a protective plastic off of the screen. Okay, pull the plastic off. It wasn't easy to grab that guy, but I got it. Push the button on the back, and the light came on, the screen is lighting up. It says it's on the bottom light, CCT 6500K, so I can push the button on the light button to change between the bottom light and the upper light. I can twist it to change the brightness. Um, I don't know if there's a way to change the color temperature. It doesn't look like I can have both of them at the same time. I have to choose either the upper light or the bottom light. We have a digital zoom. Now let's put a slide on. All right, we're going to put a slide on the stage here. And this does not have an XY, so you have to orient this guy appropriately to get it in the viewport. And then we have to focus with the knobs on the back to raise the stage up and down. Okay, so there we have something focused. And let's play with the lighting a little bit. So this is the upper light. We can look at the top of the sample. If it's a translucent sample, we can change to the bottom light and then we look at the bottom of the sample. Um, it has auto gain, so you can see it was overwhelmed and then the gain went down and we can adjust the light brightness to lower it down. Um, zero isn't very effective, but five is working okay. And so it looks like it has a pretty good gain range because I'm changing that light all over the place. It has a knob under here where we can move different things in there. It doesn't appear to have any color filters. I think 
and maybe a more expensive model would have a color filter in there. Um, the knob basically is switching between a couple of sizes of openings, but it doesn't appear to affect the color at all. Now, there is a digital zoom, so you can do this thing here that says, you know, okay, let's see how high does it go. Okay, it looks like a 30x digital zoom. Obviously, when you're doing a 30x digital zoom, you get some artifacts. And it doesn't really look like it's doing 30 times bigger. Um, so I'm not sure if that's actually a 30x zoom but you can definitely move into an area. Let's go up to 30. Okay, so at 30x zoom, we have this black spot here to that thing there. And when we back all the way out, we have from that black spot to that thing there. So I'm gonna say it's actually a 3x zoom because we kind of have one, two, three. So it basically takes the field of view three times larger if you go to x1, three times smaller if you go to x30. Now we do have other magnification levels optically here. So when you change the magnification level optically, it looks like it's parafocal. It, was stay, it stayed in focus there pretty well. So this is the lowest magnification. We have a pretty good view of a lot of the sample. I'm actually seeing the top edge of the sample here. We're going to move that up. We can see the top edge or bottom edge of the sample there. Um, practice focus here. All right, so I'm going to go up to the next level. So this is the zoom level we were at before. And I'm going to go to the maximum zoom. So it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. Now they have the ability to take a picture um, or record a video. I suspect you need a trans flash card in there to do that with. Let me see if they provide one. It doesn't look like there's anything. I don't know. Actually, yes. So it comes with a 32 gigabyte trans flash card and that was installed in the device. And basically you have to use your fingernail to push on it to pop it in and out. Um, these contacts are facing kind of up, kind of towards the back and up of the device. So when a trans flash card is installed, it has a little TF up here, um, and I can push the video, I assume, and yes, now it's recording, and so we're getting a video here, and I can change to a lower magnification. So there's a lower magnification, and I can go to here, the lowest magnification. Um, so you can record these HD videos. It says 1080 full H FHP. So I'm not sure if that's FHD um, or if it's progressive scan full 1080. Pushed again, stops the videos. So we can look at the various videos that we have recorded already. We can use this knob to rotate around them. Um, it looks like at the factory, somebody had already recorded a couple of pictures and a couple of videos on this microscope. Um, so it looks like there's some QA that was done at the factory already. Um, there's my video that I recorded. And so you can play back the videos and pictures from the device itself. There is a menu here, um, and you can change various aspects. You can change it from FHD to just uh, 720. So there's 1080 or 720. Photo resolution can go up to 8 megapixels, so it's 3856 by 2160. Um, here the exposure is zero. Brightness level, that is of the screen, I believe. Well, no, it's actually more of the camera's brightness level. So you can adjust these things. 
I believe that there is a lot of auto adjustment going on, but you can adjust the contrast, sharpness, white balance, something called quality. You can do standard, economic, or high quality. I see no reason not to go for high quality. So there's not a lot of settings to change, um, but anything you might want to change about it, you can. Now the battery display now is showing one battery bar down. Um, so it's possible that the cell that comes with it doesn't have a super long battery life, um, but you know it's been working here for five minutes or so. I've been pretty happy with the optics here. It does a good job. You've got the three different lenses for the three different magnification levels. Um, user interface is pretty easy to figure out. You've got a knob for the lights. You've got a knob for you know controlling things. So in this case, we're switching between the different pictures and videos that we've taken before. There's the menu button. There's you know playback pictures and videos, or actually just see what's on the screen. Um, and then it just has you know, hey, do you want to take a picture? Do you want to record a video? Um, I have not tried the export to HDMI. I see no reason why that wouldn't work. You just plug a TV in and then anything that shows up on this screen will show up on the HDMI TV. So if you're looking for a microscope that has a screen to view as opposed to an eyepiece um, and the ability to export photos and videos on a trans flash card or export to a big screen in a classroom, um, this guy is doing a pretty good job. So this wheel on the bottom just has different sized holes. Um, it seems like the type of thing where it should have colored filters, but it might just be to basically direct the light and say, are we having a whole bunch of light or a very directed beam of light? Um, it didn't appear to really change the brightness of the light because the gain on the camera has such a wide range, it really just auto adjusted to whatever was in here. So I guess unless you know what you're doing with this thing, I'd say just leave it on the largest one. So this guy works, um, does a pretty good job with the prepared sample. I want to go and get a drop of lake water and see if we can see anything alive swimming around in it. All right, so we got a piece of grass and water from the lake. I have down there a super tiny piece of grass on between two of the glass slides. And here, um, this is not the max magnification, but the mid-level magnification level. There's actually a little bubbles or organisms moving back and forth. I'm not sure if that's bubbles and capillary action moving up and down the grass or if those are microorganisms moving around it. Looks like they're all going in a line, so I kind of think it has to do with the capillaries within the plant. So I just put a drop of water on top of the slide and was looking at that at the medium magnification level and I saw a few little tiny things kind of moving under their own power but also the water would vibrate and so the whole thing would move around or vibrate if there was any you know, vibration on the table. Um, they didn't give you any little tiny small glass squares so I just put another slide on top um, and that allowed me to get everything within kind of the same focal plane between the two pieces of glass. Um, and I was able to move up to the highest magnification. Um, but at the highest magnification, I've never really found anything moving. So I'm not sure if sticking the two pieces of glass together killed everything or got everything stuck. Um, there's definitely stuff in here, you know, and I'm kind of uh, regretting not having a XY motion stage. So if you're considering getting this or the next version up that has the XY motion stage, um, it might be nice to have because I'm just having to use a little plastic pin to push my slide around. It'd be kind of nice if I had knobs where I could move, you know, left, right with the knobs. Because right now I can do focus with the knob and that makes it pretty easy to focus. But I don't have any left, right control. All right, so the battery that came with it is um, marked as a two amp hour battery. I see no reason for them to lie about that. You know, a two amp hour battery is kind of at the lower end of the 18650 capacity range. 
but I've put it in my battery tester just to be sure. So we're going to test it and see what the actual capacity is. All right, let's see what the battery capacity is. All right, so the battery tested at 2.1 amp hour, so it definitely meets its specification on the battery.